Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, I'm in my home studio, the kitchen today, uh, the best light in the house, uh, and I have a new drone for you today. Uh, today was the uh, Air 3 introduction day, and no, I don't have the Air 3. I wish I did. I ordered one. I, uh, I hope I'll have it soon. What I do have is a drone that may be uh, as exciting to a lot of consumers out there. People that are looking for a starter drone, people that are looking for their first drone and want to have a decent GPS uh, experience. Uh, and the Holy Stone people have come up with something here that's interesting. I've got the, uh, well, as you can see right down here, it says Spidey on there. Uh, but the drone itself is the HS360S. And what it is, it's a sub 250 gram drone. Uh, it shoots in video in 4K, 20 frames per second. That's pretty slow, but it supposedly takes 4K pictures. They're claiming a three kilometer range, 10,000 feet for uh, those of us in the US. And uh, it's all at a bargain price right now on Amazon of $159.99, $160. Uh, for a sub 250 drone. Uh, you know, if it's legit, if this thing will, will fly decently and take some reasonable video, you know, not bad. A good first starter drone. Now, normally uh, when people are looking for their first drone, I'm going to tell them something like the DJI Mini 2 SE or something. Well, that's, you know, almost a couple hundred dollars more than what this guy is. So, if you're on a budget and you just want to see if this is a hobby that you uh, want to take up, this may very well be the drone for you. Let's get this guy out of the box and take a look at it. Okay, this will be my first time looking at this uh, right along with you guys, so let's quit messing around. Let's get it unzipped here and, uh, and take a look. Open it up. I can see there's a lot of stuff in the top there. That, my guess is uh, spare propellers, etc., but we'll take a look at that and usual little foam piece, and there it is. There's a the little drone. Uh, one of the things I like about Holy Stone is they put instructions right on their controller uh, so you know what's going on there, but let's, uh, let's get the drone out first and take a look at it, and it is a cute little uh, sub 250 gram drone, uh, but understand that this does not have uh, any kind of a uh, stabilized gimbal on it. Uh, the the camera itself is on rubber cushions so hopefully we won't get uh, a lot of jello however uh, the picture is not going to be stabilized in other words as the drone moves around uh, the picture is going to move around but that's at this price point again $160 uh, yeah I'm saying uh, that's uh, for, for somebody just starting out that's just a good way to get into the hobby and uh, yeah for that kind of money you're not going to get stabilized video Again, sub-250 drone, what does that mean? That means that you are not going to have to register anything with the FAA. The FAA is not even going to need to know your name. Uh, you don't have to put any stickers on this drone. You can just take it right out and fly it. Now, that said, you do have to comply with all the rules and regulations that apply to any other drone, including uh, staying under 400 feet, etc. I would encourage you to go over to the... Uh, FAA drone zone and uh, take the trust test uh, and uh, it wouldn't hurt you. Pay your five bucks, uh, go ahead and get a tail number uh, and that way you know all the rules and you know you're going to be in good shape. Uh, however, you don't have to. That's the cool thing about a sub-250 drone. Uh, the thing about this guy here that's pretty cool is it does have uh, brushless motors. Look at these little motors on this guy. Uh, so it's going to be you know, it should be a fairly powerful little drone. Uh, well, heck, let's go ahead and just open it all the way up. Let me take these off. Uh, so there is the drone unfolded, and I went ahead and took the battery out and plugged it in the back so you can see it back there. Let's see if it's got any juice in it. It does not as I hit that button, so it needs to be uh, charged up. The battery is asleep once you charge it up, and you can see it does have a USB-C connector right there. Uh, so you would just use like your phone charger with a USB-C connector and, uh, and charge that, uh, that guy up. I don't know how long it takes. I was looking at the back of this thing and I was looking to see, okay, can I see how big of a battery is this, how many milliamp hours, etc. If you can read that writing, 
And let me see if I can get it up close here and maybe get it focused. Uh, yeah, I, you've got better eyes than I do. Uh, but anyway, it's not a very big battery, so I don't expect a lot of flight time, which is too bad because that also means they just gave me one battery. So my review, uh, our flight review is going to be just kind of in a big hurry seeing how the thing flies. We pro likely won't be able to try uh, all of the features of this drone out, and it's too bad because I think that's what they, they want you to do when you review these little guys. Now, uh, I am looking at the bottom of the drone here. I don't know if that is a time of flight. No, it's not a time of flight. That is perhaps, I can't tell if that is actually a camera or not. Is that an obstacle flow sensor? I do not see a time of flight sensor. Uh, so anyway, and by the way, don't mistake these. Those aren't any kind of sensors either. Uh, again, this is a $160 drone. So we'll see how it flies. We'll see how it hovers, etc. when we get it out on the flight test. Let's take a look at the, uh, at the controller. And by the way, I'm going to give you a better look at the camera. So there's the camera right there. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, and you know what? I am looking. Yeah, okay. There is the... Uh, the uh, uh, TF card slot there, or micro SD card slot. Uh, so it will, that's what it'll record to, to record your video or pictures. Okay, Holy Stone has given us a pretty neat controller here. This kind of uh, blows me away on this little $160 drone. So let's take a look at it real quick. Your control sticks are here on the bottom and you simply, uh, that's a storage place for them and they simply screw into uh, the, the, uh, the gimbals right there. So let's go ahead and put those on there, what the heck. So that's what it looks like with the, uh, with the sticks on there. And then uh, you have the USB-C uh, charging port right there. So you would use a uh, USB cable, again, use like your uh, cell phone charger, etc., to charge up this controller. And this thing's got some weight to it, so it must have a pretty decent sized battery in there. And again, that's a good thing. That means this is going to be a powerful controller. Uh, now, uh, the, the uh, controls themselves, uh, on-off switch right here, uh, takeoff and landing switch right there. Now, I'm not sure if you have to arm the motors first. I suspect you do. And then auto takeoff and auto land right there. Uh, this is a speed control, so I don't know if it has two or three speeds. We'll look at the instructions. Uh, and this button for taking a picture, this button for starting recording, or you can do that on the app as well. And this is your return to home uh, button right there. And then uh, I, they, this is a zoom wheel, so don't expect a lot from zoom on this drone that little camera, it's going to be pretty grainy, but it's kind of cool that it has. And this uh, raises and lowers that camera, so you can change the camera angle. Then right here, we're going to pull this out. This is where you're going to put your, uh, your, your mobile device, your phone, etc. And I see, just like DJI, they already have a cable in here. And uh, let me take a look and see what kind is already on here. So I pulled the uh, cable out, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see in here, but there's a USB-C port right there, and that's the control port. So it, if you have the controller facing you, it's the one on the right side. So your cable is going to plug into that, and then the other end of this cable is going to plug into your mobile device. Now this is USB-C, uh, so this would be for an Android phone. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll use my uh, iPhone, or I've got a, a Google Pixel phone too, so may, perhaps I'll use that and just use that same cable. But you can see it stores away there. So anyway, your phone goes right here in this clamp, clamps in, then you're gonna plug that cable into the side. Uh, so uh, that's about it for the controls on this guy. I, I do wanna show you the instructions that they put on top of this. So this is a pretty comprehensive uh, set of instructions they gave us here. This gives you all the instructions on what almost everything on here is for. So that's how to use the sticks, and uh, uh, I'm not going to go over that, but it's, it's a standard stick movements. Uh, and then this explains what all the buttons for are for. We already looked at that, so I don't need to uh, look at that again. And it does tell us takeoff and landing here and power switch there. But on the other side, I thought this was really interesting. So they give you very specific instructions on how to turn on the drone and 
how to do your calibrations uh, before you get started. So it gives you very specific instructions on how to do the, uh, the compass calibration, etc. And uh, yeah, in fact, it's telling you how to take off and land here. So simultaneously, both sticks down and in is going to st start up the motors, and then you'll hit that uh, take off and landing button to uh, take off to do an auto takeoff. I love those instructions, and they're right there, uh, handy and easy to look at. What I find on a lot of these bargain drones is often there you look in the manual and there there are instructions on how to what what order you turn everything on etc can be a little bit vague and the instructions on how to do the calibrations are vague there's nothing vague about this they've got them just laid out there perfectly and anybody ought to be able to uh, uh, grab a hold of this drone and take it off and fly it so this bag right here is just a USB A to USB C cable we've all seen that before so I'm not going to bother taking that out of the bag let me get all the stuff out of here and we'll take a look Okay, so you do have a bag with uh, all the documentation here, uh, instructions, etc., and a lot of uh, battery instructions and so forth. Uh, I do encourage you to read that. Uh, one of the things that I'll tell you that I often do that's helpful to me, I'm an old man and uh, sometimes this small print can be kind of difficult. I download a PDF copy on my computer and I read it on a big screen on my computer. Uh, but it is here and I encourage you to take a look at that. And in this uh, little bag here, we've got some spare props and some spare screws to, uh, to screw those props onto the motor. Hopefully you'll never need those. Hopefully you don't break a prop, but if you do, you've got some extras. And then this bag is what you call OTG cables. So I'm not going to pull them out of here. These are the extra cables depending on uh, what kind of phone you have. We saw already on the controller was the USB-C to USB-C. So what you're going to have here is USB-C to uh, micro USB and you're going to have USB-C to lightning cable for your uh, iPhone if you use an iPhone. And I'm not sure if I'll use iPhone or if I'll use an Android phone to fly this guy. But that's about it. That's everything that's in this case. Hey, okay guys, uh, there's only really only one thing left to do and that's to get this little HS360S out into the field and try it out. And again, we've only got uh, one battery here. I wish they'd have sent me two batteries because we'll, we'd be able to do a lot more. But we'll do what we can with uh, one battery and I'll test as much of it as I can. It's supposed to have some intelligent flight modes and some other things. And I want to take it out and try out that uh, distance. We're not going to fly it out three kilometers like they say it'll do. But I want to take it out far enough that, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to fly a mini drone very darn far anyway. But, you know, you're probably going to want to get 500 meters or so away. So, uh, Anyway, we'll take a look at that uh, on occasion, you may, uh, and get, want to get out that far. Uh, but again, it's called the Spidey or HS360S. I don't know which one they want you to call it. Uh, but again, it's a GPS sub-250 drone with a 4K camera. Should be pretty cool. Let's get this guy out in the field and uh, let's get this bird in the air. Hey, everybody. Uh, so I'm out at Julius Kleiner Park with the... Uh, HS360S Spidey drone from uh, Holy Stone. Uh, so we're going to put this guy up in the air and check it out. It's a sunny day. It's in the uh, mid 80s. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's not too bad. Uh, so uh, I, I'm going to, because I had the experience with the Potensic Atom drone where I had some issues with my wireless mic, uh, I am only going to use this wireless mic to record. I don't have the transmitter, or excuse me, the receiver on my camera. So I don't know if it still transmits or not when it's in that mode. I don't think it does, but we're just going to record directly to the mic. There's a little bit of a breeze here, and I do want this wind muff uh, so that uh, we don't have too much wind. I actually don't have it on right now, so you're hearing the mics on the Action 2 camera. That's more housekeeping than you really need. You guys want to see the drone. Let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. By the way, I only have one battery, so I don't know how many of the flight modes we're going to get through, but we're going to try it out here. So, yeah, again, let's quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Okay, I've already got the drone fired up. The next thing it tells you to do is to uh, turn on the controller. So we're going to turn that on. There we go, power on. And it says it'll take 40 seconds uh, 
and it's telling me gimbal down for whatever reason. I don't know what that is. It takes They said it takes about 40 seconds to connect and we should hear a beep. And for whatever reason, it is not connecting real quick here. So I'm getting closer to the drone to see if that'll make a difference. Okay, I'm bringing the drone back to the table here. It's not working. Whatever we did is not working. So we're going to do this again. I'm going to I'm going to cycle this guy. Well, look at that. We just connected. So that took quite a while. Uh, but I'm still getting the message gimbal down. So that could be and the gimbal is pointed down. So let me see if I can point the gimbal up and I can't. Yeah, and boy, the gimbal is pointed straight down, as you can see there. Uh, and it is not, well, hold it, now, let me try the other. Yeah, there I got it. Okay. I was, I, I, I was DJI style. I was using this roller. I used the other roller. So we're pointed straight forward now. Okay, so I'm going to put it back out on the uh, uh, pad. That just took longer uh, than uh, expected. So now it tells you to... Uh, Plug in your phone and fire up the app, and we're fired up here. I'm also going to, yeah, we're going to trust this computer, and I'm going to start a screen recording so you guys can see what I'm doing. And the app that is way out over here, I've got, it's the HS Fly app, so let's fire that up. And we are going to allow, and we are going to allow while using app. And uh, yeah, we should be in pretty good shape. Well, let's, we're going to click on uh, controls here. And it says we're in medium mode, and we do have FPV. But what we need to do first is calibrate the compass. And so uh, that was both sticks up and out, I believe. Yeah, so yeah, so that put it into, uh, oh, that was level calibration. So maybe it's both sticks down and out. Oh no, that started the motors. We don't want to do that. We're going to let it stop. Let me go grab those instructions again. Uh, I thought both sticks down and out was... Uh, and those props should go off here in a second, turn off by themselves. Yeah, both sticks down and in. Uh, yeah, so I went, I went, uh, or excuse me, up and in, and I went up and out. So yeah, it stopped. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go up and out. Hang on, up and in, and that should put us in compass calibration. It's also telling me no SD card is connected. Let's click on that. Turn the propeller arm. Move the drone to calibrate the compass. Turn on the propeller arm. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to, uh, I want to do this right, so I'm going to make sure, I'm going to look at those instructions again. Simultaneously, both joysticks towards the inner upper corners. So I'm going to show you here, inner upper corners. There we go, that did it. Maybe I just didn't do it correctly the first time, so let's spin this guy. Yeah, and it's telling us to spin the other way. And then, uh, yeah, so we should be good to go there. Okay, so we're, we, we, yeah, ready to fly, it says. That's good. Okay, but I want to connect, I want to uh, format our card. Uh, you know what? I'll bet you I didn't stick a card in there. Yeah, you know what? I don't ha even have a card in there. <laughs> Hate to do this to you. I'm going to shut everything down, and I'm going to put an SD card in this guy. Okay, just in case you're wondering, I'm using a SanDisk Extreme 32 gigabyte card, and that goes uh, right in the side of the drone here. And I'm not sure if it goes up. I'm going to push it, try and push it in facing up. And that was indeed correct. It clicked right in. So we're good to go with the uh, SD card. Let's fire it up. We'll do this all over again. I'm kind of wondering if it doesn't connect faster this time than it, when we saw that uh, first time. And it, yeah, it still says connecting. It took a good, I'm going to say, over a minute that last time. I was worried that we were having a problem. And it's still connecting here, so we'll see how long it takes. 
Unfortunately, we're burning up battery while we do this, but so far so good. A lot of these uh, issues that I've seen here so far are just kind of me stumbling around uh, first time flying the drone. And the reason I like to show it like this is, you know, if I guess if, if I see these kind of issues, you guys may as well. So that's why I show it. And it does, it just takes a while. It's still trying to connect. They say 40 seconds in the manual and it's all of that. I think it's been longer than that already. And sorry about that miss with the uh, SD card. I'll shut up here for a minute while this thing tries to connect. Okay, there uh, we connected. That took, I'm gonna say give it a couple minutes. So again, I'm, I'm plugging back in here. I am gonna start a uh, screen recording again. Uh, we gotta go through the whole trust thing again. All my fault because I didn't put an SD card in there. So, you know, that's, one of the pre-trip things you should, uh, you pre or, yeah, or pre-trip, you can tell I'm an old trucker, uh, pre-flight inspection things that you should do. Let me go back and find that uh, HS Fly app, start it up, and uh, we are going to go to controls, and there's our FPV screen. It says ready to fly, uh, so it's not asking for a calibration. And it looks like the uh, the the uh, uh, the SD card is showing there. So uh, let's uh, I, let's go ahead and look into the uh, camera menu for a second. I want to switch it to video. And look, it has time lapse and panorama. So they've really increased some things here. Let's go in and let's see flight distance. Uh, return to home altitude is set at 65 feet. That's plenty. Uh, altitude 98 feet. We can we we're gonna want to go higher than that. Oh, it's in beginner mode. There we go. Okay, that's more like it. Okay, we're good to go there. I'm not gonna mess with any of those settings. Uh, and because uh, we're not gonna fly that far, we're gonna hit save here. Set successfully. Let me click on those three dots to the right of it. Uh, and I'm going to switch to metric because that's what I'm comfortable flying in. Uh, SD card resolution, yeah, we want 4K, 20 frames per second. You can shoot shoot in uh, 2.7K. So but all this is very straightforward, very good. Let's click on track and see what that says. Uh, that's just where you've been. That'll just keep track of your flight records. Uh, so let's go ahead and start recording. And uh, we should be able to just hit auto takeoff on the app. It says ready to fly, so let's hit that. And slide to unlock. Take, uh, I have to hit the takeoff button. And there it goes. Oh man, looking good. It's moving around a little bit, but, uh, but it's not bad at all. Let's... Uh, Bring it around in here, and it's dropping. I think so. I looked on the bottom of it. I can't tell. Uh, it, it's got a little camera in there, but I don't. I don't know that, that for optical flow, it looked like a camera. So this is me bringing it in here, slowly. Let's see if we can bring it up here a little higher. Uh, you know the FPV feed looks really good, folks. This is a hundred and sixty dollar drone. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's the zoom right there. I was hitting the wrong button. That actually doesn't work too bad. And, but I can tell you this, uh, the camera uh, tilt is very sensitive. So let's, uh, let's see if we can do our droney now and how much battery have we got? Uh, well, it says all green, so we're good to go there. So reverse and o up now. Hey, I'm telling you what, guys. I was watching this guy pretty carefully because I wanted to make sure I got above the clouds. And uh, yeah, so you're seeing, let me see if I can lower that camera. And that's too far. So because it doesn't have a gimbal, this camera is gonna be moving around. But I'm gonna tell you the FPV feed is really good on this guy. Uh, and uh, so let's go ahead and let's grab some more altitude. We're not that high. Let's get it up about 30 meters. Maybe even more than that. Let's go up about 40 meters because I want to give this guy a really good shot at uh, at getting a good uh, connection. 
I'm telling you, the controls work. The FPV feed is really good. Uh, color me impressed so far. Okay, let's get let's move forward here and let's just start immediately here and see uh, see what we can do. And there's no speed reading on here, so I can't tell you how fast this guy is, but it's moving along okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, maybe I can see that. Is that is that? I don't know if that number at the top there is meters per second. That's possible. It doesn't seem like it's going that fast. And that's me kind of adjusting the uh, the speed. Let's hit the speed button here. I'm going to stop for a second. We're going to hit the speed button. And that, okay, so now we're in sport mode. We were in normal mode. And I guess it did tell us normal mode at the beginning. So let's go ahead and head out to the corner of the field out here. I'm going to go full forward. And I'm telling you what, connection-wise, this guy is great. So what that number is next to the compass, I don't know. It's, it's actually smaller now. But I'm telling you, power-wise, holy cow, this thing's got a great connection. Uh, I, it's, it, it's perfectly, the FPV feed is good. I'm going to go a little bit higher here. I want to give this guy a good chance. I'm kind of shooting through some trees, so I want to give it all the chance in the world. And uh, I, I can tell you the camera on the FPV feed looks pretty darn good. And of course, you're not going to get out, uh, you're, it's not going to be stabilized footage because this that guy doesn't have a gimbal. So we're out over half a kilometer. We're out over 500 meters. Let's go right out to the corner here. We're not going to go over the street. But okay, so we are out 580 meters. Uh, that's Walmart you're looking at there. I do see some barrel distortion in the lens. Listen, in a drone of this price range, that is perfectly understandable. We are, uh, we've been recording for four minutes now. So let's go back over the park here. So full stick forward again. And again, we are in sport mode. Uh, so I don't, I still am wondering what that number is. I'll have to look in the manual, that number that's counting down there. Uh, I'll have to look in the manual and see what that number is telling us. Uh, I, I don't think it's number of satellites. I suppose it could be. But if it is, we got, we've got plenty of satellites. And you're seeing, you know, you're seeing it kind of j jiggle around here a little bit. Again, because there's no gimbal on this drone. And it's pushing, I think it's probably pushing against the wind here. I'm going to adjust the vector. Bring it back towards us. And again, guys, this is a sub 250 gram drone. You don't need to register it. You don't need to do anything. For $160, that's the zoom. So that's full zoom. We'll see how that looks. Let me zoom back out. That's okay. Yeah, so it's stepped. So that's all the way zoomed out. Uh, let me see if I can uh, uh, pick up the camera. Oh, that was the wrong way. Yeah, so there we picked up the camera a little bit. That'll give you a little better view. It's, and, and, you know, so the thing is pitched all the way forward, and that's why you have to kind of point the camera up. Again, there's no gimbal on this drone. And, you know, I'm right down there below us there. Man, I'll tell you what, uh, so far so good. And I, the, the drone is right, almost to right above me now. Let's go the other direction. I'm telling you, the connection on this thing uh, this is this is one of the best uh, what I will say toy grade mini drones so far knock on wood so far this thing is flawless man uh, you know you saw me struggle a little bit uh, at the start there but uh, uh, but that was mostly operator error okay I'm gonna stop right here and I am gonna go into uh, normal mode. Well, that's low mode, so that's fine, camera mode. Uh, and we are going to stop recording. And uh, I am going to allow access to photos because it's probably going to save my camera roll, which I'm sure it did. And it's also saving the SD card. We're going to switch to uh, to photo. And, uh, and let's take a picture. Picture receiving, it says, and I don't, you know, I wonder if if it's just a screenshot or what. 
But uh, but let's point the other way here. Let's move it around. Well, you know what? Yeah. So that that is the uh, the the uh, uh, Meridian uh, Village right there. Let me see if I can drop. It. Oh boy! I'll tell you what. It's really hard to adjust the height of this camera. So let's take a picture of the Meridian Village. And then you know what? Let's zoom in on that guy because it does have that zoom wheel, and we'll see what that looks like. I don't expect much. Wow, it, every time you click it, it zooms another click. So I wasn't at max zoom before. So let's, that I think is about, whoop, boy, it's really. So let's try that right there. And let's see how that looks in a, uh, that, it's cool that you're getting all these features on this, on this budget drone. I'm just telling you, I, so far so good. So let's click on that camera mode again, and I am gonna turn around, it, it'll do a panorama, so let's see how that does. So now I don't know if it will, I wanna get facing the, uh, the Boise Mountains here, the Boise front, and yeah, I don't, you know, the drone is kind of moving around in the sky a little bit, but uh, let me see if I can, I'm gonna move forward a little bit. And this is in slow mode. And again, I need to get in the manual and look up and see what that number on the top right is telling us. 23, is, it's bouncing around there. So I don't know exactly what that's telling us. Possibly satellites. So I'm going to see if I can pick, uh, pick up the camera just a little. That's about right. And we've got a little crooked horizon because of the way the drone is. There's no gimbal again. So let's take a picture maybe. And then I'm going to, uh, well, I should have put my drone or my, my phone into uh, flight mode because my, my ring camera keeps going off. Okay, I'm back in the drone here. We're going to click on that. Uh, uh, I don't know if we took a picture or not. I'm going to go into panorama. Yeah, without interference. So let's try that. I'm going to Click that panorama, and let's see what it does here. Yeah, so it looks to me like it's just taking a 360. It's just going around on its axis. And I don't know if that's going to come out as a video. It's, it looks to me like it's in video mode, but maybe it'll stitch it all together as a picture. Yeah, start composing. So it's going to stitch it together into a picture. This is cool. This is a $160 drone, man. I am tickled to death. Okay, and we got a little check mark there, so I'm saying that that's done. We're going to click on that again. We're going to go back to video. I'm not going to do, uh, it has time lapse. I don't, we don't have enough battery power to mess with that. Let's start video again, and let's bring this guy back to us and, uh, and see if we can uh, look at some of those other flight modes. It does tracking, so I'm going to go out here. Uh, into the open and see if it can track me. Now we're going to have to be uh, kind of brave at the, about the way we uh, do this. See if I can bring that guy down to me here. Drop. Tr I'm trying to drop that camera down. There we go. You can see me down there. See if I can get pointed towards me and bring the guy down and in. And that's the problem without a gimbal is it can be difficult to uh, you know, to, to see exactly where you're at and so forth, so. Bringing the drone down. So I don't know, and it's, you know what, I'm gonna put it into uh, normal mode here. We were in film mode here, and I think we'll get uh, a little better uh, performance in normal mode. So I think, I don't know if it'll, it'll be able to catch me in that, uh, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's stop recording. And I'm going to go into uh, the little boxes on the uh, left-hand side, click on that. And I think that's where we're going to get tracking. And boy, I'm looking at all those. Yeah, so this is optical track. Uh, so please ensure the GPS is good, and it is. 
The aircraft is not more than 164 feet. It is not more than 164 feet. And I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of, boy, what's it doing? It's moving around. How does it, know, how can it, how is it optically tracking? I don't know, because we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't draw any pictures or anything. So, and, but, the, but I can tell you, oh, I think that just is a cameraman mode. I think that's what they mean by that. Uh, so, okay. Uh, and so I didn't start recording either, doggone it. So let's get out of that. So we got out of that and the drone is faced back the other way. Let's face towards me again. And, and we're going to try, I'm going to start recording. And I don't know if it'll kick me out of that. And let's click on uh, where it'll follow the controller. So, should follow the controller now. Yeah, so that optical tracking, I think all it means is it's cameraman mode. The drone will just spin around. But look, this GPS tracking is working awesome. It's following me around. And I'm keeping an eye on the drone because I don't want to pull it into any trees or anything. Uh, so let me see if I can push it backwards. I'm going to walk straight towards the drone. And I accidentally hit the picture button there. So let's go back in to video. Start video again. Maybe. Okay, started video again. Uh, that's the problem. Those buttons are right on the front of the controller. So, oh, it took it out of that mode, maybe, or did it? Maybe not. Okay, let me see if I can push it backwards. And it is, it's going back. Uh, as you can see, it's not terribly accurate, although that, I don't see that as a big deal. Okay, let's get out of that. Clicking on that icon, and it did. And it spun around again. Let's, uh, let's bring it back. And what else have we got here? I'm gonna get under the shade so I can see my phone a little better. I'm trying to remember all the uh, flight modes that this guy had. So again, I'm clicking on the, uh, yeah, so it looks like we've got waypoints. I don't think we have enough battery to do that. But let's, uh, it's got orbit, it's got spiral. Let's try a spiral. Let me see if I can get the thing pointed at me. There we go. And I want to go up higher because I want to make sure this guy is above. So let's click on spiral. Low power function, it's not available. So that's what I was afraid of. I wish I had another battery. We're going we're gonna to run out of, uh, uh, of uh, battery power. So we were not going to be able to try anything else. Well, we got as much done as we could. And I keep clicking on the wrong button, but I'm going to bring this guy up and I'm going to back it up and let's see if it'll, uh, see if we can let it go into, yeah, reach height limit. So it's uh, restricting the height and distance while it's in low power. So it should do a, it should go into low battery RTH. And if it doesn't here in a second, I'll, uh, I'll click it into return to home. I'm watching the battery meter across the top. You got that line across the top there. You can see that red line in the top left. Uh, so yeah, I am not going to risk it. I am going to uh, put this guy into return to home and that's the button uh, right next to the uh, right on the uh, right hand side of the controller. So I'm going to hit that button. Yeah, and that did that put it right into return. Let me see if I can drop that camera down. What I don't want it to do is to, uh, yeah, and it's reorienting it. This thing is, I'm telling you, I'm giving this guy a great A, a and look at how close it is to the pad. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you folks. 100 and 100 and, uh, and uh, $59.99 right now on Amazon for this guy. We're gonna mow a little grass. So I'm gonna see if I can 
pick up that camera here. Well, I picked it up, but it's in the grass, so, okay. So I picked up the drone here. Uh, so tell you what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna, one of the things you always wanna remember on these bargain drones is to stop recording. That way you won't get a uh, corrupted file. So I'm gonna do that right now. Let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. I'm liking this one. Hey, okay guys, the uh, Holy Stone HS360, I've got it written down so I'll get it right. The HS360S Spidey drone. This is a sub 250 gram drone, uh, so you don't need to register it. You don't need to mess around with anything. It's a GPS drone with uh, 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 brushless motors, so it's, uh, it's fairly powerful. It does shoot in 4K, 20 frames per second. I haven't seen the video yet, but you know what? That's almost beside the point. I can tell you the FPV feed looked pretty good. And as I said, this is not a stabilized camera. It does not have a gimbal. So you're gonna get that kind of shaking. And I saw that on the FPV screen. It just is what it is. But it's a, again, you're gonna hear me say this a lot. It's a $160 drone. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say this is the first under $200 drone that, that I can remember that's done everything that they said it would do and was supposed to do and was easy to get done and easy to take off. Uh, all I did was I used all the instructions off the little card uh, that they put, uh, you know, when it comes, it's over the top of the controller, tells you what everything in the controller is. Uh, and it flew great. I mean, the controls work good. Yeah, now was that you saw me struggling with the gimbal a little bit, pushing it up and down. Yeah, it's sensitive, but you know what? Again, I, I can say in this price range, that's not bad at all. Uh, and I kept getting confused because uh, on most drones, this scroll wheel is, it runs the gimbal. In this case, this scroll wheel runs uh, the zoom and it's just digital zoom, just crops in on the sensor. But even that looked okay. Uh, so you, I, you, know, you guys will have already seen it already. I haven't. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, this is the one for the gimbal and it's very sensitive. So you just got to be careful and you got to remember. Plus it goes the opposite direction of what I'm used to. All Those are just all little niggly little things, uh, part of the deal. Uh, this controller is, uh, I'm going to pronounce this uh, controller great. So what does it remind you of? It reminds you of DJI's RCN1 controller. It's the same form factor. Uh, you know, the sticks uh, go on the bottom, the charge ports on the bottom there. Uh, you know, I already went over all the controls with you, so I'm not going to do that again, but they're all right here. I can say the only downside is, you saw during the video, at one point I accidentally touched the take a picture button, took it out of video mode, and it, and it took a picture. I think that was while we were doing tracking. Again, I wish they would have given me more than one battery so we could go over some of those other uh, intelligent flight modes, but I mean, it's full featured. It's got all that stuff on it. Again, $159.99 on Amazon right now. I don't know if that'll change, but that's what it is right now on Amazon. Uh, so you saw the return to home. It was pretty accurate. It, it was within a foot or two of the landing pad. Man, that's great. Uh, what else can I say about it? Oh, speed wise, I, I didn't see the speed on there uh, anywhere. Uh, so I don't know how fast it was going. And then I saw that little compass looking thing that was kind of on the top right, was throwing some numbers at it at us. I don't know if that was number of satellites or, or what it was. I'll have, to, I'll have to look that up in the, uh, in the uh, manual to see what that was. Uh, however, it didn't seem to affect our, our flight at all. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. I think anybody can grab, buy this drone, if, even if you've never flown a drone before, and I think if you follow the simple instructions, I would recommend you just go out in an open field, not among the trees like I am here, but you're going to fly this drone no problem. It's, it's going to do fine for you. And, you know, wind-wise, I don't know, I wouldn't fly it in gale force winds, but there's a little breeze today, and it didn't bother the drone uh, at all, so uh, it was just fine. Uh, it, oh, the other point I wanted to make is that it does use an OTG cable, and I think that's huge for that connection. Uh, this this had just this had a phenomenal connection. We I never had any kind of FPV issues at all. In other words, the uh, the the picture that's coming back to my mobile device was always crystal clear. 
uh, no stuttering, no problems. We had no control issues. The furthest we were out was about 580 meters, which is quite a ways. That's over half a kilometer. Uh, on one of these days, I'm going to take this guy out in the country, and I want to. I'll, I'll just see uh, how far it'll go on that connection. I have no doubt. They're saying three kilometers. I, from what I saw, I have no doubt that it'll go out at least a kilometer. The issue is. On a little mini drone like this, why do you want to fly that far anyway? That's not what these kind of drones are designed for. But it's nice to know that you get that where you are flying, you got a good strong signal. And this guy absolutely showed that. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm just trying to think what else can I tell you? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this guy. I'm not pretty happy with it. I'm way happy with it. I, I've spent... Uh, many years looking at bargain price drones and boy often they're just awful many many times and I feel sorry for people that buy them because they're so frustrating to fly and I will say I've had Holystone brand I've had some Holystone drones that were not so good but not this guy this guy I mean it it was perfect and uh, so I can definitely recommend it I will put my affiliate link my Amazon affiliate link uh, down below if you've got a, uh, if, if, if you're somebody that just wants to try out GPS camera drones and see what they are, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, here's a good one to start with. You don't need to license. I'm going to recommend you go to the FAA Drone Zone and check out all the rules and regs because you do have to abide by all the regs. Just because you don't have to register it doesn't mean you have to, uh, you, you can, it gives you a buy on the rules. You've got to uh, uh, follow all the rules. Uh, however, uh, it's a lot less hassle and uh, yeah uh, you can get it out and just fly it and have fun so uh, again sub 250 drone I told you I'm gonna say it a lot $159.99 uh, if you're a, a first-time droner uh, if you've got a, uh, a teenager or, or even a preteen if you got a preteen uh, son or daughter I'd probably supervise them while they're flying it if you've got a teenager just buy them, and they want a GPS drone, they just want to get started, buy them one of these, and then you can move up later to uh, a DJI Mini or something. So again, this guy is $159.99. The, the next one up, the DJI drone uh, that I would recommend is the DJI Mini 2 SE, but that drone is $339, uh, and it uh, does not have the case or that kind of stuff with you. Now it's a fantastic product. I recommend that Mini 2 SE a lot. Uh, but the next one down, I'm going to say is this guy. This is a good way to start in the drone hobby. Man, I've been talking a lot here, uh, but you can tell I like this drone. So, uh, and I and I think these kind of starter drones are really important to our hobby. So anyway. That's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I absolutely appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. And I'll tell you what, I wish Holy Stone would have given me more than one battery. Uh, but I will, uh, we'll do some more flights with this guy. I want to try out the rest of those flight modes. And I'll probably take it out to the Snake River Canyon or something. This guy is worth sending out over the canyon. And that, that really is the first under $200 drone that I've ever been able to say that about. So uh, anyway, uh, that's it. I'm done. See you guys later. Bye now.